And Gideon made a cry for all of the men of Israel and he called for three or four tribes. And they came together, 32,000. And when the 32,000 got there, God said, I can't deliver you with all these folk. You got too many. See, we get comfort in how many folk are with us. Honey, are you with me or against me? You know, that's the gang concept. Every gang feels confident when he feels I got more folk in my gang than you got in your gang. But God said that if I deliver Israel from the Midianites with all this host you got, years to come, centuries to come, you'll be talking about how Israel got up, rose up, and delivered herself. But I want you to know that the only way I can get glory, it's got to be done in such way where that you'll know you didn't do it with your numbers. And God cut down the number from 32,000. First he told all the cowards to go home. God said, I'm going to do it and all I need is just a small handful. I want you to know that when God gets ready to do his thing in your life, you don't have to worry about who's not with you. Never seen so many folk whining and crying about who's turned on me and who did this and who did that and who did the other you just don't know sometimes god is trying to separate he's trying to separate until he gets a sincere number i've had church members say how can we get the world to like us better and the answer is be worldly that's the only way they're going to like you Jesus said, the world hated me and it will hate you. That means if you're like Jesus, the world will hate you, period. And if it doesn't, it's because you're not like him. You have two choices. You can either please God the Father or you can please the world. But you cannot please both because they're opposite ends of the pool and they do not mix. You will either offend God or offend the world. Make up your mind you can't be both. You read the story of the healing of Jairus' daughter. And Jesus didn't even take everybody that he had with him in the house. He left nine of his disciples outside. Didn't take nobody in but Peter, James, and John. And then he took Jairus and Jairus' wife and he himself and walked into the girl's bedroom and there she was lying there dead. She made number seven. The Lord couldn't work his miracle until he put the doubters on the outside. Sometime what God want to do in your life He would have done it long time ago if he had disconnected you from some of the folk you hang with Every time he got ready to bless you You went and got your best friend and sometimes your best friend is your worst enemy And then a whole lot of time you can't pray by yourself. You got to have your prayer partner and sometimes instead of P-R-A-Y-I-N-G for you, they're P-R-E-Y-I-N-G on you. You don't know a lot of time God has to strip everything and everybody away from you. Doesn't mean that I don't love you, but I only had to do that to get you to that personal relationship. God said, I don't want it to be nobody between me and you. This is the message from heaven for you today when you've lost your business after years of toil and you have the tendency to say all things are against me. Hear this, if God be for you, who can be against you? When you've lost your job and you've had an automobile wreck and your baby got sick just when you needed every dime and you're tempted to say all things are against me, remember that Jehovah Jireh sits upon his throne and everything's going to be all right. When your dreams slip through your fingers like hot sand and you say all things are against me, and your marriage has failed and you go into your home for the last time and you take the pictures of your children off of the wall and you gather their toys and their clothes and put them in a sack and take them into mama's house and you say all things are against me when you've married the love of your life and he dies 
and she dies in the prime of life and the sun of your life sinks at high noon replaced by a darkness that's broken your heart and you're tempted to look at God and say all things are against me I'm here with this message from heaven for you today whatever your problems listen to me you must remember what Jacob did not know you must remember what Jacob did not know Jacob did not know that his flesh and blood was sitting on a throne of gold with unlimited power with unlimited wealth and at that very moment was working for everything to come to his Jacob's advantage Jesus Christ is your flesh and blood flesh and blood because he's God and man he sits on the throne in heaven with all power in heaven and on earth he has unbelievable wealth and at this very moment He's working out every detail in your life for your benefit. Mountains of impossibility are getting ready to move. He will make you the head and not the tail. He will bless you in the city. He will bless you in the field. He will bless you with your basket. He will bless you in your store. He will bless your health. He will bless your going in and your coming out. Lift your head and smile, child of God. The blessings of heaven are on the way. You may be fighting a battle, depression may be in your life and in your heart, and you just say, there's no way out, there's no way out, it's never been hurt, anybody got an answer, and I need no way that I could ever get my miracle. You say, what shall I do? Oh, let the Holy Ghost come on the scene. Let the Holy Ghost come upon you. Let the Holy Ghost overshadow you. Because if you let the Holy Ghost get in your situation, our God can bring miracles into your life. Don't limit God to meeting your needs in one particular way. I'm saying to you, there is no message in the Word of God that can bless you or heal you or deliver you like the message of God's grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace can move mountains of shame and despair. Grace can calm the troubled sea of your soul. Grace can fill the barren desert of your life with streams of living water. Grace can bring you through the fire without the smell of smoke upon you. Grace is an ocean without a shoreline whose depths have never been charted whose endless healing streams are life-giving water that have never been charted by anyone on earth grace will set you free from the tyranny of yourself grace will set you free from the chains of your past have you failed have you failed have you failed miserably did you make the wrong choice ask God to forgive you and experience his amazing grace forgive yourself then square your shoulders live love laugh and be happy God has forgiven you God has buried it in the deepest sea God says I'll never remember it again you forget it God's forgotten it and live your life with joy unspeakable I'm talking about don't limit God David said God is not limited to human means God is not limited to human means. You say the banker's given me up. The doctor's given me up. The situation looks bad. Listen, God is not limited to what man can do. But you see, God is not limited to human means. You may be in the wilderness today. You may be saying, I don't see how this can happen, or that can happen, or this can happen, or that can happen, or the other thing can happen. But I want you to know God is not limited to human means. Don't limit God. So I'm saying to you today, in the 21st century, the thousands of you who are here and the millions of you who are watching around the world, are you weary and well-doing? Go to Jesus. Are you brokenhearted by the betrayal of a family friend, a dear friend, your spouse? Go to Jesus. Do you fear the gathering storm your family is facing? Go to Jesus. Are you grieving over the false accusation of Potiphar's wife trying to destroy you? Go to Jesus. The word says the tongue that rises against you, you shall judge. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Go to Jesus. Are you searching for the physician that heals dreaded diseases? Go to Jesus. He's still the healing Jesus are you searching for living water in the desert of your days go to Jesus he is the living water are you walking through the darkest night that you have ever known go to Jesus he's the light of the world what are you searching for what are you looking for here's the answer go to Jesus go to Jesus go to Jesus and what he says do it and you shall have it
What's the point I'm making here? The point is you can never exhaust God's resources. You can never exhaust God's resources because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But that song that Andre Crouch wrote several years ago, many times I find myself singing it. Riding down the street in Macabre, I hear myself saying, and now I thank God for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. And I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. And I wouldn't know what faith in God to do. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. And all I want to tell you today is, don't let what you're going through shake you. Don't let what you're going through make you feel like God doesn't love you. Because I hear him say, Lord, I am with you.